Hi, in this video, we are going to build a topic model using non-negative matrix factorization or NMF uh, as it is abbreviated. In my previous video, I built a topic model using LDA. And in case if you have not seen the video, you can click the link on the top and watch it. Both LDA and NMF, NMF can be used for topic modeling. Uh, there are some differences which I will talk about it as we go into the details of it. Uh, but uh, LDA as such is more consistent when it comes to topic model and NMF, NMF has its own application when it comes to topic model when the topics are not uh, very coherent. Right. So let, let's get started. What I'm doing is in the in this case, I'm importing pandas to read the file. I have my scikit-learn feature extraction uh, to perform the TF-IDF vectorizer. I'm not going to do a count vectorizer over here. I'm just going to use a TF-IDF vectorizer. But when we did LDA, we used like count vectorizer. Uh, the reason is uh, basically LDA is more like an uh, statistical model and NMF is like a linear algebraic model. Uh, which I'll cover more details on it as we go into it. I am having scikit-learn decomposition uh, package uh, where the NMF, uh, the, where the NMF, uh, NMF algorithm is there. I have matplotlib and numpy just for uh, visualization and processing. I have some regex and NLTK function uh, to clean the data uh, in the in the process of before feeding into the model. Right. So that's what I have. I am importing it. I am also downloading uh, some of the NLTK packages, uh, which will be used for basically tokenization, stop words and everything. I will kind of uh, I will kind of like uh, go through the stop word as it comes. But this is a punct package, which is for uh, tokenizing the incoming uh, day, incoming text data that we have. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read the file. This file is consumer complaints uh, data set. This consumer complaints data set is downloaded from CFPB. CFPB is, is basically Consumer Financial Protection Board. Uh, you will get a lot of uh, complaints that a customer has raised against a bank on CFPB website. Basically, if the bank is not answering to a customer, they can go to a uh, centralized uh, uh, for basically financial protection board uh, and raise their complaint and the bank is expected to complain solve their complaint within an X amount of days. Uh, so this is a data set that is downloaded from that. What I've done is I've downloaded it and put it in my GitHub repo. But if you want, you can directly go and download it as well. The data set is in zip file. So what I'm telling doing is I'm doing a compression equal to zip in pandas. So it will automatically unzip it and take the file and load it in the pandas data frame. So the, let me run this and let's quickly visualize the data. Now you may you will see basically there are a lot of columns in this data set. I'm not going to use all the column. The column that I am more uh, more going to be uh, using is basically the complaints uh, column, the consumer complaints narrative. This is like all the detailed uh, complaint that a customer has filed against a financial institution. In this case, the financial institution is basically Trust Financial Corporation or it can be a capital on financial corporation. So there are any, any banks, you can raise a complaint if you're not satisfied with the service or the banks are not responding on time. Right. So I'm going to use the consumer complaints narrative data set. So now what I'm uh, doing is basically I'm just quickly checking uh, the target products that I have downloaded. There are a lot of products. It can be a mortgage product, credit card, debit card, account. So what I've done is I downloaded data for six products. Uh, one is the debt collection. Basically, uh, when you are not able to pay a debt, it goes for collection. And uh, that collection agency may call the customer and maybe uh, the, the collection agency might gone to extent where the customer might not be happy. Uh, so they may have raised a complaint that it's about credit card or prepaid card. It's about mortgage account, checking or savings account, student loan account, or it's a vehicle loan account. So these are the six categories I have downloaded the data for. And if you quickly see the companies, uh, Citibank has the most complaints with around 3,200. Capital Finance One Finance is next, followed by Bank of America and JP Morgan Chase. Uh, the reason is these are at the leading bank as well. They are the most of the customers. So maybe the complaints are high as well, right? 
Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the a specific column that I need, even though I'm not going to use product and company, I'm just going to use a consumer complaint narrative. I'm just using product to show if we can validate something from the topics that are coming out. A company, I just loaded it, but it's not required. And what I'm doing is when I'm loading the data, I'm also changing the consumer complaint narrative column to complaints. I'm just renaming the column uh, because like uh, this, co this column name is pretty big. So I'm just renaming it. So that it's easily uh, act easily usable right so uh, i have the complaints data frame let me quickly run the output and you can basically see we have three columns over here one two and three the product the uh, financial institution and the text i just set this panda set option display max with minus one because if you have long text if you don't have it it will truncate it it will show dot 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 after some time if i put minus one that it will show the entire column uh, entire uh, data for that particular uh, column. Now, if you see over here, in the, these are some of the examples, uh, right? And if you see, there are like a lot of XXX values. Basically, what this particular uh, bank does is uh, any sensitive data that if it feels it's there, it will just put XXX over there. Um, the, this is an auto algorithm. Sometimes dates also come with XXX just to make sure uh, customer personal information like telephone number or social security number of something that they are provided does not come into the data set. So we have to clean this data, uh, which is having this XXS before feeding to the model. So we will say, and we have to also like maybe remove all the stop words. The stop words does not make any sense uh, um, because this will be very frequently occurring word. And since we are using TFIDF, maybe it will uh, it will kind of not give an right uh, right uh, frequency of words as well. So I'm going to clean that as well. So let's see like how we can do that, right? So before that, I'm going to split the data set uh, between between like your uh, train and holding data set. I think my test size is uh, 0.3. I put 60%, so it's 0.3. The test size is 30%. So I'm going to split the data, uh, even though like it's an, uh, more like an uh, topic modeling is an unsupervised learning problem. I'm just using the text size to the uh, test size to see like if the same product category that I'm comparing the topic against is is visible in the test also. Otherwise, the test is not required. Right. So I have the data. I let me quickly do the training uh, product value counts. This are again the six different products against. Right. Most of the data it's for debt collection followed by credit card and there's very less data for student loan and vehicle loan. Right. So uh, the the few things I need to uh, do to the data before feeding it to an uh, TF-IDF vector. Uh, I'm going to do a stemming. You can either use a Potter stemmer. I'm going to use a snowball stemmer with English as the language. I'm going to download the stop word corpus. And then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to build the stop word in this particular vector. So I'm just taking the NLTK corpus stop word English and I'm building a set object with the stop words. Right, so the, I have this, then I'm going to write a function. What the function will do is it will take the data, it will tokenize the data. TFIDF internally as functions for uh, tokenizing the data. Uh, rather than that, what I'm doing is I'm overriding those functions because I need better control on how my data should be cleaned rather using the default method. So that's why this function is there. This function, I'm taking the text data. I am basically doing the NLTK or tokenizer that we downloaded. And I am passing on only words that are greater than three characters. So anything less than two characters is has the, the and all. I'm just removing it. And I am also like wherever the word basically has only XXX or slash, which we saw on the top, I'm removing it. Uh, now, what will happen in this case if like the date as like say XX slash 2020, the 2020 will not get removed, right? So what I'm doing is I'm writing one more function over here where I am basically uh, telling like truncate all the decimal, like substitute all the uh, integer values with space and then do a strip. So in this case, those those particular attribute will also get stripped. So now I have that. Next, what I'm doing is I'm taking these tokens and converting everything into lowercase. That's what I'm doing. I'm calling map string dot lower and converting to lowercase. 
and finally what i'm doing i'm calling the stemmer that i have created on the top and stemming the input uh, data that is coming in so this is the function and then i'm calling the tfidf uh, vectorizer now uh, tfidf is nothing but let me run this and let me talk about the details of it it takes some time now tfidf is nothing but term frequency inverse document frequency and it's kind of a statistical technique that is intended to reflect how important a word is to a document now what the tfidf internally does it it increases proportionally uh, to the number of time the word appears in the document and also it offsets uh, by the number of documents in the corpus so basically if a word occurs frequently it will also offset the output uh, tfidf value the reason is some words will appear in all the documents maybe that word does not have any meaning or value to it right a stop word is a pretty common hand is there the that and all will appear in all the documents but that does not have any really domain sense to our topic creation right so we don't want to take that consideration also and tfidf kind of offsets offsets those value uh, basically it adjusts that uh, these uh, these words typically appear in general are pretty common right that's what it typically uh, does so here what i am doing is i am calling this tokenize function in the tokenizer that will tokenize stem and everything and telling stop word equal to none the reason is i have done my own stop word i am not don't want internal stop word i am telling my max document frequency is 0.75 that is if this particular word occurs in 75% of the document that is the max if it occurs more than that then ignore the word i can you can actually adjust this and see how the topics are created i have kept 75 but you can make 0.50 or you, are, you can also give the exact number of documents like 500 600 700 or whatever it is right yeah, there are two ways to give it either you can give exact number of documents or you can give a percentage over here and what i'm doing is i'm telling my max features as 1000 so take only the top 1000 uh, 1000 uh, words and build a vocabulary out of it right and uh, basically i'm telling take n gram also 1 and 2 so you can give higher n gram also sometimes like checking account is two different word but it may occur together so that's why i'm giving n gram over here but you can give a, a larger number also but in this case i felt two is more than enough now this uh, it will take some time it has run so what it is going to do is it is going to take the tfi data it's going to take that uh, training data frame i have the complaints column it's going to uh, like call the tfi data factorizer and fit it and then also transform the training data set over here and then it going to create a vector so if you see the output we will have a vector based on the uh, term frequency uh, we will have a vector uh, uh, basically like a uh, sparse vector for 1000 uh, features that we have created and depending on the occurrence of a particular feature in the column you will have value highlighted over here so that's what it's going to create over here right it's a sparse vector we can quickly check what are the top 1000 uh, feature names it selected uh, based on the occurrence of the word so i can go to the vectorizer that i created on the top and say get feature names it will print all the 1000 uh, words that it felt are uh, occurring uh, more common across all the documents and also are critical and important important so these are all uh, some of the words now some some words you might uh, find uh, pretty simple like in this case say it's like because we did stemming that's why you are not seeing the full word because we are going to the root word over here so it says insurance companies interest charge interest rate these are all single word that's why we the n gram is required over here otherwise it will take interest as one word and charge as another word right so that's why the n gram really helps so these are the top 1000 words that are there now we have this we are going to perform uh, basically nmf uh, model on top of it right so uh, basically nmf as i said stands for non negative matrix factorization and it's a basically a technique for obtaining low rank representation of matrices with only positive element there's no negative elements so it's uh, because it's only positive elements it's very, very easy to interpret the output results now basically what it does it it factorizes the input uh, tfidf factorizer in this case that we have right that's nothing but a matrix it basically factorizes the matrix of tfidf vector into two matrix which is nothing but w and h matrix so the output will be a w and h matrix the output w matrix is basically nothing but a dictionary or basis matrix and the h matrix is nothing but the coefficient matrix right so so you have the output dictionary matrix output coefficient matrix 
And the idea over here is take an input matrix in this case, the TF-IDF vectorizer matrix, and it, this, it can be expressed basically into two terms. The first term is the summation of basis vector that is nothing but the W matrix and it is multiplied by nothing but the corresponding coefficients for the uh, summation matrix that is H matrix. That's the coefficient matrix. So let me run this decomposition over here. Now this decomposition we are telling how many topics we want here we are telling we want uh, basically six component nothing but we want output six different uh, topics to be classified as uh, you can give any number of topics because uh, uh, based on your data the the only difference between the nbn the lot of difference between nmf nmf and lda but when you have uh pretty coherent topics right the topics are uh non-noisy and pretty clean and you can easily understand uh, uh um seeing the particular words and text and these are from a similar domain then typically LDA performs very better and LDA is very consistent as well. But when topics are very incoherent, when you're dealing with like social media data or any other data that comes in random uh, or news data or something like that, maybe NMF uh, might not necessary might perform uh, better in those scenarios but it's not that it's uh, you it's better to run uh, nmf and lda or any other technique along with it there are a lot of techniques available for topic modeling so uh, so i have no two vectors as output as i said it nothing but it factorizes your input vector uh, into two different vectors the w and h now in this case h vector is nothing but uh, will basically tell you the topics and a word association so in this case if you see we are selected for six topics and you can see the h vector is nothing but you are you are basically corresponding coefficients for each and every uh, features that is each and every word the thousand words that we have so it's a six by thousand matrix in our case right so you have six topics and you will have all the words that are prominent in the topic so what you can do is for for topic this if you think like this topic one topic two topic three for this topic one you can uh, sort all these particular coefficients and you can take the maximum coefficient the top x coefficient will be the top x word that is very prominent in the topic right that's what the h matrix is now the w matrix in this case is nothing but tells us which topic is particular pre, uh, very prominent in uh, in this particular scenario in in the case of uh, the first uh, the first document that we have so this basically gives you a matrix of all the uh, different um, uh, basically different for each topic in the document it will tell you uh, a particular uh, association and you can from this you can go and associate whether it belongs to uh, first topic or second topic or third topic so that's what the w1 matrix is so if you remember what i said w1 is nothing but the summation matrix right and the w is nothing but the summation matrix and h is the coefficient matrix so now we have these two matrix now what we need to do is we need to extract the words first and then we have to build an top uh, basically topic and word matrix uh, data frame right that's what we need to do or a document and word matrix data frame so the very first thing is let's extract the top words that are very significant in each topic now if you see basically uh, there are what i'm doing is uh, you can set any threshold i'm setting like give me the top 15 words for each topic right so i'm put number of words as 50 15 and then i'm getting all the feature name as an array the vectorizer dot get feature name i have thousand features that i have given on top uh, in the tf idf vectorizer i'm getting that as a vocabulary i am creating a lambda function uh, in this case, I'm just creating a function. I'm not using the function. So first I'm creating a Lambda function. I am taking my incoming, in this case, what I'm going to, I'm going to pass my H matrix and I'm going to sort it. So once I have all the coefficients in the H matrix for each of the topic, I'm going to sort it. And once I sort it, basically I will have all the map, uh, the higher coefficients towards end of that particular array right i am picking the last 15 uh 15 words from uh, 15 indexes from that that's what i'm doing so which are the top 15 significant coefficients are that that's what i'm picking once i have it i am going to call basically uh in this case i'm just going to go iterate and then call this particular vocabulary over here and get that significant word for each topic that's what i'm doing over here so i'm telling like in this case i'm taking the top word the lambda function i'm created i'm iterating to my h matrix that i have 
got on the top i am picking the top words and then i have the top words i am going to get the vocabulary of element so if you run this and run the topics as uh, the next the topic output you can see basically these are my six different topics and these are the prominent top 15 words that are spoken in the topic now, if you take, for example, the first topic, it just talks about like phone number, the bank set, contact, email, inform. It looks like more like uh, the customer is trying to contact the bank, right? That's what the topic um, is telling. But but maybe it did not get any response there. It said that they will call back uh, and uh, they, they did not get any response back from the bank. The second can be more kind of a uh, collection. If you see there is a debt, there is a credit, both debt can be collected. Uh, the uh, debt account is there, mortgage account is there, credit card account is there. Basically, the maybe it's a collection uh, agency is basically uh, there's an external collection agency where typically bank play a uh, bank sends for uh, kind of collecting from the customer, the customer who are not paying, right? And then there is about checking bank, maybe uh, that is account, bank, checking, and fund. See, there are these how you identify a topic there's no rocket science to it right it's all about domain knowledge so based on the topics coming in we have to assign our own domain domain understanding and map those topic and then we can compare it i'm going to compare it against some product uh, that i have uh, taken the data frame but mostly it's domain knowledge and here it's basically telling like the mortgage it's talking about my mortgage account there's a payment loan paid and all this stuff then the, the other one is about theft right the final is about like credit card charges or something like that or disputes or uh, interstate charge and all this stuff right so these are six topics we have now let's first uh, arrange it in a proper way and then let's see like uh, what does each uh, each document that we have what topic does it signify and then we can go and map it back to see like uh, what is the right topic we need to select right so for that what i'm doing is i'm first creating like an uh, topic matrix i have like six components that i have given like six topics so i'm just iterating it will just create topic zero topic one topic two topic three yeah then i'm taking all the training data uh, and then I am uh, checking the length. So basically, I, how much ever my training data is, like if I have 40,000 training data, it will create that much amount of documents. So I will have my documents as my rows and topics as my columns. That's what I'm doing over here. I am create first time creating a data frame and I am picking the significant, uh, I'm picking the topic uh, importance in that particular document. So basically the W matrix, if you see is nothing but uh, I said it's more like a uh, summarized uh, vector matrix, right? Which tells the importance of the topic in that particular document. So I'm just taking that I'm creating a data frame. And then what I'm doing is I'm picking the max of that particular topic value. Uh, which tells me what exactly topic is and I'm creating one more column called dominant topic and I'm printing it. Uh, I know this is a little hard to consume, uh, but once you run it and run across each and every step, you'll get a better idea. Uh, so if you see the output, uh, uh, basically you must uh, understand what I am doing. On the top, I have all the topic zero to topic five. That's what I did in the first line. Then I have the document zero to the number of records that is in the uh, row level. And then this is the W vector that I have for each column. So it's 0.05, I'm only taking two decimals. So 0 0.05, 0 0.01 and everything. And then what I'm doing, I'm doing a hard max on this particular value. So in this case, 0.05 is the biggest. So that hard max will give you 0 0.05 and that is nothing but by dominant topic. So the dominant topic in this case, 0.05 is 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 zero. In this case, the dominant topic is 0 0.06, that is 0, 1, 2, 2. Right. So that's what I'm doing. Basically, I'm arranging in a way that I know for each and every document, what is the topic it is assigned. Right. So this is what it does. Now uh, I have it. I can quickly go back and print my training data. Right. And then let's see how it uh, corresponds to that. If you see this, my training data and my training data will show the first five rows. It says like I received multiple calls from this company. I have asked them to not call me or anyone associated with me. And if you see what was our topic zero, the topic zero was nothing but about call. See, they are call receives 
uh, call back, email information, right? So it's basically more about the contact that the bank is trying to make, right? Let's go to the second topic. In the second topic, again, the customer is complaining uh, that city is claiming there's a fraudulent activity on my account. And this is about a credit card or a prepaid card account. So if you go to this statement, maybe uh, they are talking about some scenarios of like credit card account and uh, they have frozen the account and all this stuff, right? So if you go on the top, let's see what was second topic. It was more like collection uh, disputes uh, uh, and other things, right? So maybe this corresponds to more like disputes. Maybe I, there's a big text. Uh, we need to see like, uh, rather than reading this, let me go to a small text and maybe uh, let me read rather than this reading the order. Let me take the next one. This looks pretty small rather than that. So in this case, it says like, I have disputed the account and reached out to the company creator many times, but it failed. The account is being reported inaccurately or correctly. This is a debt collection, right? And if you go on the top, uh, the, the, the and what was it because it is corresponding to topic one and in topic one it's talking about a collection and that's what it is it is about collection and uh, uh, basically uh, that's how you basically associate your topic and that this is where you add your um, add your basically domain experience to see what topic it corresponds to uh, one thing i missed out when i was reading this basically it this was corresponding to not topic one it was corresponding to topic two and the topic two in this case is basically your uh, account and everything right the bank transaction general general inquiries about your account or bank or something like that right so uh, similarly you can go and associate everything right now i have this particular uh, data right now this this my model is developed i can go and deploy this model but what happens when a new input record comes in in a real world uh, how do you use it right so that's what i'm i had a old dot data set basically i kept 20 percent of my data as old dot data set so what i'm going to do is i am going to basically take that data x old and then i'm going to transfer i'm just taking like uh, five records over here i am calling that uh, transform function i've already fitted the data i have a fitted classifier on any new incoming record i must just use the learned coefficients to transform it so what i'm doing over here is i'm calling the classifier transform function and then i'm creating like a w vector of the old out and then I am again creating the same function I created on the top, the topic document vector. So I'm not going to go over it again. And then now I will get the dominant topic over here in this case, right? So basically this is how it is. The document zero corresponds to uh, the second topic. I can quickly print the old dot record set as well. So there are, so if you see over here, this is how the old dot old dot data set looks like. And um, this the first one generally talk about the checking or saving account, right? I have a business checking or savings account and it's telling details. And this is telling it's topic two. And the topic two, if you see from our training set, was nothing but about checking or uh, bank accounts, right? That's what topic uh, two was. So basically this is how you do with your uh, whole dot data set. So similar document uh, one is the uh, third topic, second topic, third topic and all. So this is how uh, basically you use like NMF uh, algorithm to do tap topic modeling. And that's about it. Thank you very much.